You're listening to the Wired for Impact podcast. We talked offline before about how relationships are under spiritual attack. So much of that is in the poor models that are presented in our media, in our movies, in our culture. They're constantly perpetuated to the point where, you know, you go into a bookstore and it's the inverse of that sacred union that you're talking about where energy is flowing is. you have obviously pornography is a direct assault on mostly men obviously a lot of women too but l largely men is you know there's addictions there and there's talk about survival you know that yeah. that, that so keeps us in locked yeah. locked into a survival state mm -hmm. where we're just looking for the breadcrumbs like yeah. we're satisfied with these low levels of dopamine hits Mm -hmm. And there's, we're leaving the sacred union, as you talk about, we're leaving the magic and the um, connection and the energy. That's another thing I hear all the time is how everybody is so exhausted. And this idea of doing more is like incomprehensible because we ha I've got nothing left to give. And yet when you surrender into the natural state, you're talking about that we're organically built this way to be, yes. we, we don't have to, you really don't have to go. This would be frustrating for some people to hear, but this isn't something that you have to go learn. It's really more an issue of what you have to unlearn because you yes. already are it. Yes. It's already within us that the sacred masculine is in every masculine being. The sacred feminine is in every feminine being what's happening in part of the intentional inversion right is like well the feminines are being inverted to masculine the masculines are being inverted to feminine then you can't have a sacred union because you're not in your authentic core polarity you're out of alignment with yourself which means you're not created to source that's the mechanism for the inversion and it is mm -hmm. very 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 rampant right now but that's okay because there's people who see it and there's people who can guide people and help them reclaim, right? Mm -hmm. And there's people who are doing that work and every day consciousness is rising on the planet. And I just look at it as 3D and 5D, right? Like we've been in 3D and we're heading into new earth. And in new earth, we're not going to be living out of survival anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's coming. It's coming. Yeah, you can feel if it. If we have free energy, it's so funny because then a sacred union, right? If we have free energy then we have an abundance of money. Then what is a sacred union is not about money. So then how do you have a sacred union then? The energy, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Money is just an example of the energy. People get so stuck in, well, the masculine should provide. And if I make more money than him, it's, okay, money is just one way he can provide. Don't forget that there's like 2,500 other ways, Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, it's fine if he, if he provides money, great. But what if it, we live in an abundant world and you actually are not a feminine being that needs the money? Like you're mm -hmm. like, oh, but I need you need to listen to me. I need support with the kids. I need, you know, there's th different things that we need. And, and that's the amazing thing about healthy masculine men, right? It's like, that's in them. They want to give us what we need. They for sure don't want to give us what we don't need. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's Men, there. It's organically there. That's the most incredible thing. Yeah. I have a funny story about that. I've shared this before once or maybe twice on the podcast, but I was at a Tony Robbins event many years ago and it was a smaller event, a non-public event and all on relationships. It was a week long event in Maui on relationships and we covered everything <laughs> Every possible stone that could be turned over was turned. But one of the most beautiful outcomes of that entire experience was most people came into the experience very depolarized. So even though it was a, you know, enlightened Tony Robbins community crowd, whatever, we're still human beings. We still have our conditions and our habits, et cetera. And it's a very alpha. He, he attracts a very A type personality, a very alpha energy. And so you had a lot of badass people that have very accomplished, very successful financially. A lot of the women were running the show. They were either brokers or, you know, business owners themselves, mm -hmm. or at the very least, they may have had men who were kicking ass in the business world, but in the relationship space, in their marriages, they ran the show. And a lot of the times the men were more than happy to relinquish those reins because he's putting all his energy and effort into providing. 
Mm-hmm. And he's got his baby, his business, he's grown his business. He comes home and he doesn't necessarily have leadership. The, he doesn't think he has the energy and the leadership intention in the relationship. And she naturally steps into that. Mm-hmm. And so what happened was you saw a lot of very masculine women and a lot of very nurturing. Yes, dear. What do you, what do you need, sweetie? Badass is at work. These guys are, I'm not, these are not pussies. These are, these guys are not beta men. They were, they are alpha men at work, but then in the relationship. So anyway, they were depolarized in the relationship over the course of the week, every single morning, the men went to a martial art type training where we literally, I'm going to say this almost verbatim, the guy, the trainer taught us how to deconstruct the human body. If you were faced with a threat, here's how you literally dismantle this threat uh, and where to strike the body to create massive injury so that you can get away, how to, you know, rip the eyeball out of the skull. I mean, it was intense stuff, but you know, we're learning this stuff as men. So every morning we're learning how to basically kick the shit out of somebody. So what do you think the energy is that we walk out of? Like, is it possible that we walk out of that with our chests, you know, a little bit fuller and our head a little bit higher, right? The women every single morning were going to, uh, it was a program called S curve, which is, as I understand it, very uh, like, it's almost like what do they call it? Pole dancing, right? So very feminine, very flowing, very getting back into your body. And it was the reports that I heard, it was extremely uncomfortable for a lot of women because they were so used to being in control, so used to getting up every morning and getting shit done. And, you know, what's the plan for the day? And what, what do the kids need to be? And I got to get this, da, 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 da. it's all this getting stuff done. So for them to kind of surrender back into feeling their bodies, feeling their feminine flow, getting out of angular movement and more into the organic flow was very uncomfortable. But do you think it's possible that they walk out of those every morning feeling a little bit more feminine, a little bit more flowing? I mean, I, I tell you by the end of that week, it was so funny because everybody lost about 10 years off their energetic self that they were projecting out of the world. Women softened. They were literally, literally they were glowing. They were radiating. The men walked around with more respect, more pride, more what have you. And then of course we went deep into the masculine and feminine to explain to the men how dangerous the feminine world is. How, how safety is paramount to the feminine and not just physical safety. I think a lot of men think, we just need to provide physical safety. Oh, I I walk on the inside of the curb. Oh, I, you know, open the door for her. Oh, I I'm aware of the guy. And that's needed and hundred percent necessary, of course. But there's also emotional safety. And I think a lot of women don't experience the emotional safety and talk about provision. That's a a huge calling for men to step into emotional provision, to provide that safety for for a container for her to be in to safely express and experience her frustrations, her pains, her annoyances, et cetera. And then at the same time, the women were presented with just how shitty it is to be a man and how difficult it is and how much pressure there is to be the man, to never let your guard down, to have to constantly provide, to constantly have to protect. And yes, we're not necessarily looking over our shoulder when we go out into the parking lot, but we're constantly surveying for other men to keep you safe, you know? Mm -hmm. So anyway, it it was such an eye-opening experience and such a embodied transformative experience that I've never looked back from since then. It it was, you know, super transformative. So anyway, I share that because we're in this alternate reality right now. We are really under attack and we go into contraction and it takes to your point, a rebellious nature to say, fuck that. No, we're going to open anyway. Women, men, we're going to step up and pierce and lead anyway, even though it sucks, even though we get rejected, even though this, that, whatever. I, I tell my men that I coach, like, suck it in. Like, just, just like, take in the the shittiness of it. You, like, the Navy SEALs has that um, tagline, embrace the suck. And it's like, you've gotten kicked out of the pride. 
You know, now you're a skinny male lion trying to fucking find food. Nobody wants to mate with you. You got nothing to offer your scraggly hair, you know, and it's like, yes, like be alone, develop yourself. I, I get excited thinking about it whenever I get to those points, because it sucks. It does suck. You feel like nobody's on your team. You feel like nobody gives a shit. And you know what the kind of reality is, is like, it's kind of true. But it, it's in those moments where I get this like divine connection of like i'm getting emotional thinking about it. it's like god has you yeah you know sorry this is supposed to be your episode and i've kind of taken it no over it's so important though it's so important peter because yes men, men do struggle and they suffer and i wrote a post about you know how we often women often complain about Oh, it's so hard to date. It's so hard to find a good man. It's like how hard it's for it is for men. Like how vulnerable you guys are to us and to what we bring in, onto the table, and how just a little bit of a side eye or an emotional response from us, like how much it literally can can drop drop you down to feeling like nothing. And that's it's like. That's a beautiful thing, you know, and no, men don't get that nourishment and it is sad and they need it. And I, I, I admire you and I am so thankful and honored that we can speak into that, that you're like, you're standing into that space for men with this episode, because yes, it's true. And we can move through and we can unite and, mm -hmm. and it's in us. But yeah, we have to step out of the programming. With the programming puts us in an adversarial positions. Yeah. My needs are this. You're no, my needs are this. Well, you did this. Well, I did, you know, and men are this way. No, women are this way. I'm going my own way. I'm I'm a passport bro. I'm gonna go find women somewhere else. Or uh, women are there's no good men out there. They're too intimidated by my wealth, my my success, etc. We're in this constant, clear, predictable <laughs> friction grind it's low common denominator and yeah. what what you're really inviting us into is not an adversarial relationship it's a complementary one where one energy feeds the other and then that energy feeds back into the and it's this yeah. expanding union that becomes more powerful because of the giving nature of it thank you for listening to this episode of wired for impact if you're interested in creating and expanding your impact be sure to visit us online at impactnow.com